Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Historians. Today we're going over Jim Starlin and the theme of him being a bringer of death to comic book characters. Now Jim Starlin is coming from that 1970s generation of writer artists. You have Howard Chaikin, you have John Byrne, Walt Simonson. These guys are a class unto themselves, comic book auteurs in whatever story or themes that fascinate them, bringing a lot of joy to fans like myself and many others. Now in Jim Starlin, Starlin, we have an overall theme of death. Now, death is the cessation of vital functions. However, sometimes it is given a cosmic tag as a universal truth. Jim Starlin wrote some of the best comic stories as writer, artist, or both. And to celebrate his contribution to the history of comic books, let's all acknowledge the death he has brought to both Marvel, DC, and independent comic universes. I don't think there are many comic book creators that understand comic book death quite like him to the point where he co-created Marvel's death cosmic entity. Now, Jim Starlin's death is said to have her first Marvel appearance in Captain Marvel 26, 1973. However, he did portray death as a sentient cosmic consciousness in a fanzine called Star Studded 18, 1972 in a Dr. Weird story where a little girl meets death in a vision. Notice that Dr. Weird looks like Drax the Destroyer, and we talked about that in a previous episode. This Dr. Weird is fighting a universal battle against the cosmic entity of death, which is the theme he brings into much of his professional comics work. Jim Starlin would bring this notion as death being a cosmic entity into an early non-canon Marvel story written by Stephen Skeets in Journey into Mystery 1 Volume 2, 1972. Technically that would make this Starlin Skeets issue death's first Marvel appearance. It was inked by Mike Plug no less, so it's a great few pages to read. A story of a hired killer who can't stop dreaming of this girl who also dreams about him. He runs out of his house, unable to sleep without the deathly dream, and sees her in the street. He swerves into a crash and dies, and finally she stops having the dream. He, however, dies as the cosmic entity of death laughs because death had intended him to die. Now, Captain Marvel 26, 1973 was the next time Starlin would depict death as this cloaked figure for Marvel. This is considered as the cosmic entity's death's first appearance of the superhero Marvel Universe death as we know it. This issue has her standing as an ominous figure next to Thanos in his second appearance after Iron Man 55 earlier that year. Considering that we see Starlin killing off a lot of characters, it would make sense that he creates a being like Thanos whose name actually means death and who falls in love with the cosmic entity death whose bidding he follows out of a sick sort of love. Now Starlin's death is front and center again on Star Reach 1 1974. Star Reach is a comic that brought together the underground style of comic books and fused it with people from Marvel who created their own comic books so they would own the copyrights. Inside of the Star Reach comic, Jim Starlin actually penciled and wrote the story of the birth of the death entity as an old man telling the story to a young child. At this point we're seeing a pattern that Jim Starlin likes to write and draw about death. In another story in Star Reach, Starlin writes and draws about the death building which was the Marvel New York office which also figured a cloaked figure, Death. Drax the Destroyer was created by writer-artist Jim Starlin for Iron Man 55 in February 1973, which was the cover date, and his physical likeness was modeled after the Doctor Weird from Star Studded Comics in 1963. Drax's origin was discussed in Jim Starlin's Captain Marvel 32, 1974, discussing that he was Arthur Douglas, a human male whose family was attacked and killed by the supervillain Thanos. Some more death comes our way, and in the 1970s Marvel Universe, Thanos was the vehicle through which Starlin would kill characters or their families. In this case, Drax's wife. His daughter obviously lived on to become Moondragon. In 1975, Warlock 10 shows another example of the Thanos bulldozing killing machine creating more death with Adam Warlock and his friends feeling sorry, wondering if they would be next. Well, it would all come to a head in Avengers Annual 10, 1977, when Starlin concludes his 1970s Thanos death saga and death-filled conclusion. The issue starts off answering the question of whether Gamora or Pip would be next by showing Gamora in the death throes after crushing injuries by Thanos. Adam Warlock takes it upon himself to finish Thanos as a threat to the galaxy, but not without Gamora dying first. Later on in the same issue, Thanos also then kills Pip the Troll, whom Adam Warlock finds. Pretty cryptic to see Thanos sneaking up on him in the dark. Then Pip, dead, and sprawled out on the floor staring at the viewer. You let me die. Jim Starlin wrote and penciled Thanos' sanctuary ship, which had a similar star 
or planet destroying blaster ray that would wipe out suns and planets powered by a soul gem. Take in mind this was before the Star Wars Death Star released much later in 1977, but also note that this is still very much the same concept. Thanos' Death Star is shown here killing millions of lives by extinguishing a star with surrounding planets, and similar to Obi-Wan Kenobi in the first Star Wars film when Alderaan was killed off, Moon Dragon hears millions of voices dying all at once in a debilitating psychic horror. So at this point Thanos is a murder machine that Starlin uses to plow through the universe granting death. Adam Warlock takes a stand against him and in the process is killed by Thanos as death presides over triumphant. <laughs> However, this story wrapped up with Adam Warlock momentarily resurrected long enough with his soul gem to kill off Thanos and granting our murderer the gift of death. So there's a theme of death being a very strong part of Jim Starlin's stories in this era, but that doesn't stop here. We find that Starlin continues to bring more death to more comic book characters. Vanth Dreadstar is a Jim Starlin created character who looks close to himself and premiered in Epic Illustrated 1 1980. The Marvel Magazine in a 14 chapter limited series called The Metamorphous Odyssey, edited by Archie Goodwin. This magazine was nice because it allowed the creators to keep the copyrights to their characters. However, we find that this storytelling is also not very short on death. Here is Vanth Dreadstar quite seriously bent on accomplishing his space mission and killing anyone in his way, and in this case we see Jim Starlin's face saying that he is actually death. For example, here he is killing Akhnaton in the Metamorphous Odyssey. Again with no real hesitation, a death occurs. In 1981, the Metamorphous Odyssey ends in a stunning climax where the Infinity Horn explodes death all over the dang place. By the Infinity Horn being blown, the entire Milky Way galaxy and all its life forms are killed and all subsequently encounter death. So our Starlin death count is already in the millions, less than 10 years of work into the professional comic book business. In 1983, Jim Starlin wrote The Death of Captain Marvel about Marvel's losing battle with cancer. As he dies, he meets Thanos who had been dead and death herself and submits to them both as they all walk into the afterlife together. This is a beautiful graphic novel and raised the stakes on adult superhero storytelling in the mainstream comic business. Something also notable is that Captain Marvel actually stayed dead, which is no easy task in comics, so Starlin should get a prize for that. The miniseries The Cult 1988 is a fun morbid story where a cult kidnaps Batman and exposes him to brainwashing while under captivity. Starlin had the brainwashed, drugged Batman gun down a man dead. Politicians are also assassinated in this story by the cult members, so no shortage of death here too, folks. Batman 417 1988 started the four-part Ten Nights of the Beast about Batman finding a Soviet assassin who kills anyone in his way. After Starlin had his villain, the KG Beast, kill hundreds of people, Starlin had Batman lock him in a sewer and leave the Russian to his death. That was retconned later by another writer when Batman informed the police where to find his suffocating enemy before he actually does die in the DC Universe canon. Death of Jason Todd in 1988 was written by Jim Starlin who felt that taking on a kid ward, dressing him up like this and parading him in front of killers was child abuse. He wanted a consequence for this behavior and also didn't enjoy writing a Robin into the story. So after a telethon to decide on whether Jason Todd lived or died, the thumb pointed down and Starlin delivered for us teenage readers at the time, the death of Batman's sidekick on a silver platter in the Death and the Family story arc. In 1988, Cosmic Odyssey was a galaxy-spanning romp with the signature DC heroes and the new gods, a four-issue limited series penciled by Mignola but written by Starlin. And if we know Starlin by now, someone is going to die. And a couple panels shown here is that the planet Xanshi dies, which resulted from Jon Stewart, Green Lantern's overconfidence. An entire planet, done. There's also another page in the story where an entire dimension is killed off as Dr. Fate cauterizes a multi-dimensional wound infected with anti-life. So that's just not a person or planet or galaxy now, it's an entire dimension that is killed off here. To put the nail in the proverbial coffin, Ambush Bug sacrifices himself and dies in another panel of the 1988 Cosmic Odyssey tale, and we have Orion shocked that the little bug had it in him, at which point an angered Batman punches him. Let's move forward in time a little more when Jim Starlin's cosmic death wave hits Marvel, Again in 1991's The Infinity Gauntlet, when Thanos returns, resurrecting Warlock, Pip, Drax, and Gamora, they bring a modernized chapter to his 1970s death swan song.
song. Thanos seizes the Infinity Gauntlet and in a love letter to Mistress Death, the cosmic entity, he murders half the universe right off the bat. In 1994, Jim Starlin made his half-demon, half-human anti-hero breed with Image Comics, which had a lot of death. For example, the first few pages opens with this. Breed is a fun story, by the way, because it explores demonic dimensions rather than the science fiction cosmic, so it's a nice change of pace and still carries a large amount of death for all of us Jim Starlin fans. Jim Starlin writes the Mystery in Space miniseries in 2007, which starts with Captain Comic its death and immediately we embark on a journey with how he is reincarnated into a clone body although there is reincarnation and afterlife here it still starts with cold hard death also in 2007 kid cosmos another starlin creation halts the pathway of the genociders who are murder and bring death to various planets boom planet gone so kid cosmos has to use his cosmic energy to stop more death from happening and of course the coup de gras in 2008 jim starlin provided a Mercy killing for Jack Kirby's New Gods in 2007-2008 in his eight-issue arc, The Death of the New Gods, where each one dies one by one and in large groups where Superman, beyond his ability to control, watch them all get killed in front of him. At the end of the story, Superman ponders their deaths, which is fitting because he flew to New Genesis and met them in their first appearance from the early 1970s by Jack Kirby. Jim Starlin is one of the finest penciler writers of the comic book industry. Like Jack Kirby, Howard Chaikin, Walt Simonson, and others, he can draw and write wonderful cosmic and street level stories and from the looks of things we can always look forward to him killing somebody and delivering death to comic book characters by introducing that risk to his stories it gives a gritty palpability that appeals to both the best and worst of us one thing for sure i think it's nice to have a bit of consequence in fiction makes us feel like we got a little skin in the game another thing for sure if a character needs killing jim starlin can definitely deliver don't forget to click on the subscribe button. We got more to say in other videos. Also check out our podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Google Play. We also have constant updates on Twitter and Instagram. Or continue the conversation in our Facebook group. Cheers.